And we're going to start off um, with a guy that I met at the Wright office in Munich a couple of years ago. And ever since, I've been following his adventures really close. I did some drawings with his drawing app, French Girls, and followed his adventures at the other side of the pond with his special guest app. And I'm really proud to announce him here at JoesCon. Please give a warm welcome for Mr. Chris Jones. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Everyone, Yoshi. All right, Yoast Khan, how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Uh, by a show of hands, does anybody in here know who I am? Not too many people, huh? A couple of front row people, Marcus Tandler, of course. A um, couple things. Number one, it's an absolute honor to be back here in the Netherlands. Uh, I spoke here in the mid-2000s um, at a conference called Affiliate DAG way back in the day, and there was... At that, pers at that time, um, someone who was just kind of starting their career a couple years into it by the name of Yost. Uh, Yost and I have been friends for many years. Uh, we've shared the stage together at SEO Oktoberfest for many years. Uh, we're what's called brothers, which means that after five years of speaking at that show, which is probably the most exclusive SEO conference in the world, uh, you earn a ring. And so that brotherhood is something I share with Yoast. <clears throat> but we go back together from the beginning of our careers. The reason I asked you guys if, like, if you guys knew who I was, because I've been doing this for a long time. This is like 18, 19 years. And so for, by a show of hands, who in this audience has been in the space for at least 15 years? Okay, this, we've got some veterans in the room. Um, so we've seen it all together, guys. We've seen it all. We've seen the changes. Uh, I met Yoast when I was the founder and former CEO of a company called Pepper Jam. So for the folks that have been around for 15 years, you probably maybe have heard of Pepper Jam. It's one of the fastest growing digital marketing agencies and affiliate networks in the history of the United States. I sold that in 2009 to eBay. Uh, after that, I, I founded my own investment company called KBJ Capital. And really what I did was I've always been a growth marketer. A lot of people say, what are you, Chris? Are you an entrepreneur? Are you an investor? Are you a motivational speaker? You know, what are you? And honestly, guys, sincerely, I'm a growth marketer. I'm a growth hacker. I think through how to generate lots and lots of organic search traffic, and I've been doing that since the late 1990s. But I founded that investment company. I've made about 25 investments. I've sold seven businesses in total. Um, and I have a lot of experience as an entrepreneur. I wrote a book back in 2008 called SEO Visual Blueprint. I was one of the kind of first authors in the States for a big publishing, publishing house called Wiley. That book has gone on to sell over 100,000 copies, which is fairly badass. Um, right? Yeah, I mean, if you stick around in this industry long enough, we could really contribute to the way people think about our industry. Uh, what else could I tell you? About four years ago-ish, I founded, my non-compete uh, ended, uh, and I founded a company called LSEO.com. Uh, we're one of Yoast's 10 or 15 preferred partners. It's a partnership we've had for several years. Uh, anybody in this room one of our current clients? Okay. Um, but we've been working with, with Yoast referrals for a long time. I've contributed over nearly 400 articles I'm a columnist on Search Engine Journal, Search Engine Land, et cetera, Inc., Fast Company. I wanted you guys to have a flavor of my background because I am a personal and professional development coach as well, and I want you guys to know that no matter what stage of your career you're at, the future is entirely up to you, who you become, the impact you have on this industry. And if you do things consistently over time, you guys could have a dramatic, not only personal success story, but you could, have, you could be one of the thought leaders that helped shape this industry. So I get to talk about link building. We're going to take an advanced approach to it. This is not the cookie cutter 101 version. I'm going to give you guys about 15 very specific actionable tips that we use at LSEO um, and that some of the more advanced SEOs are using around the world. But let's step back for a second. So by another show of hands, 
how many of you in here have ever written an academic paper? Meaning that you wrote it based on existing sources and then had to cite those sources at the end of the academic paper. Show of hands. So then, go back with me. I'm in actually at this time late 90s graduate school at Villanova. My roommate, who was a law student, was wearing a shirt. Never heard of the company. Different colored letters, said Google. Became very, very enamored by it, wanted to study it. Turns out at that time, well, prior to the founding of Google, the founders, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, Sergey Brin, were at Stanford. They were doing a doctoral dissertation on really the future of search. How do we build a better search engine that presents better, more relevant, consistently more relevant results than AltaVista and a lot of the others that were there at that time? And what they did is they took from academic research the idea of authority. How could we measure authority better than anyone else? Well, in academic research, which about 80% of you just connected with me on, we have the ability to measure authority based on prior uh, contributions to a topic. Anyway, uh, Larry and Sergey did that in the form of link analysis, early days of page rank, if you guys will, page, Larry Page, right? So this created an industry around link analysis, measuring the quantity and the quality of the links. And for those of you that have been in the industry for 15 years or more, you know that um, a lot has changed and a lot has stayed the same. Uh, what stayed the same is links still matter. Um, it remains the number one ranking factor, uh, but obviously because of machine learning and because of AI, things are changing. We know over the history of Google one thing. We know that they're constantly investing in the user experience to measure and maximize it. And as such, our industry, if you will, as SEOs, as you guys know, but particularly around links, has become more difficult. I'm hoping that today's presentation plays in the sort of white hat, above the fray version of it, and you guys hopefully will leave today with some real, I might give you 15 suggestions, but there's two or three game-changing ways of thinking about how to play where you're gonna stay above the fray, you're gonna stay out of trouble, and ultimately you're gonna be able to, although it will, it will require an investment on your part, you're gonna be able to dominate while you're, all the competition are taking shortcuts. So I kinda got at this. It remains important because it remains important. It was the founding uh, core algorithm of, of Google. And um, there's other benefits. I don't want to oversell these benefits. Come on, guys. We're building links mostly because we know that it's going to impact how the sites that we're trying to rank, how they rank. But it does allow you to build relationships with other businesses. Um, it is a potential source of referral traffic, absolutely. A couple of the tips that I have for you guys today, um, I really think about them more along the lines of thought leadership than I do about the benefits that we get as link builders. I was just backstage, and you know, Yoast has done an incredible job of branding. You know, we often think that, you know, the, sort of the tactics that lead to link building are manual, right? But we're always looking for organic ways of, based on our reputation, building authority. Yoast has done an unbelievable job. Think about the animation and the caricatures. I mean, I just got, I walked out on stage with one of his caricatures. You guys could do things like that to position your brand in a way that's exceptional. By the way, that's one of the three or four takeaway tips from today. Think and act in a way that makes you stand out and be exceptional. This is the 101. We know this. All links aren't equal. Uh, that's a fact, uh, especially if you're thinking short term and you're taking shortcuts. Who said that? every smart white hat SEO everywhere. Uh, the other one, which we'll just get out of the way, is that content is king. Again, we know who said that, all of us that are trying to play at an elite level as it relates to this industry. 
All right. So what matters as it relates to 2019 and link acquisition? Quick schema that I put together at a high level. This actually started out as a 500-word um, talking points, and I put it in the form of this schema for you guys. Most important thing at the top is, is relevant. When you guys are, are acquiring links, quantity is so much less important than the quality of the links you're acquiring. What's going to measure quality most effectively? How relevant that acquisition is. I know we get caught up in DA and PA and all this other stuff, but I am here to tell you that the degree to which the link that is pointing back to your site is relevant to your business, that's most important. As we go down, there are metrics that we need to be looking at as sophisticated SEOs and link builders. We know that. On the one hand, we could look at it as domain authority, and on the other hand, some of the tangential benefits of link building, which I already touched on, brand referral traffic. Domain authority, we're looking at things like brand exposure. If you're acquiring links from sites within your niche, you should be acquiring those regardless of some of the metrics that are out there because you get the brand ex exposure. If somebody ends up on a website in your industry and you're not mentioned, that's not good for your brand. So there's other benefits here when we're thinking about link acquisition that will help you guys. Um, the value of the link can't be overstated, right, when we're thinking about domain authority. Uh, by the way, domain authority, I know Rand was on the stage this morning. I don't know if he talked much about uh, Moz, but uh, DA is about to be recalculated. That's great. That algorithm change on their side is long overdue. I think that our industry has abused the use of DA. I think that DA often was not a really great indicator of uh, link equity, um, and I hope that their new algorithm changes that. But there are DA, there's PA, there's trust, there's other ways of thinking about this. Going back to the referral traffic side, the benefits, uh, business leads, thought leadership. And hopefully the schema just kind of like, when you're out there building links, you could look back on this and say, am I being consistent with this? Can we check some of these boxes? So tip one. So this is, this is fairly old school, but reverse engineering competitor backlinks. Since the beginning of my career, since the beginning of SEM rush and um, search metrics and others, like many of you in this room, I'm a data nerd. I love, to, I love to use data to our advantage. There's no better way of using data than not only understanding your, yours, but understanding the data of your competitors. So you use these tools. You start with using these tools to take a very close look. Don't just download the competitor data, backlinks, but then take that data and start to categorize it and classify it based on the same rules that you would use when you're building links. You're getting into the mindset of the competitor, and you're thinking to yourself, how effective have they been based on your own strategy? So you may modify your strategy based on these insights. You may also validate your strategy based on these insights, but you're looking at things like, you know, if you peel back the onion on the quality of links. You're looking at, you know, um, how many, uh, based on their, their, their top level domain, how many of those? We're looking at industry so that we could classify them, again, back to relevance. Looking at the geographical um, uh, origination of those links. We're looking at DA and PA still because it's, it's, it is a way of better understanding uh, authority, traffic, et cetera. So once you analyze your list and once you classify it, categorize it, segment it, um, then you got to put your, your strategy together uh, for how you're going to mimic or replicate. And some of the other tips I'm going to share will help you do that. This technique, I assume that everyone has heard of. The skyscraper technique is really, really basic in theory. You have a list of target keywords. You take those keywords, you go to Google, you type in those keywords, and you look at the top 10 rankings, and you conclude that you have to build something much better than 
those listings in order to compete for those keywords. That's step one. Um, you also need to analyze the amount of links coming in. You need to better understand you know, uh, why that page is ranking. And then you need to go over the top. You need to create some amazing sauce. You can't just attempt to be a little bit better. Moz and Rand came up with this sort of similar idea of what they call <clears throat> the 10 time content strategy. <clears throat> you identify a keyword you want to rank for, you analyze the content strategy that they're ranking for, and then you put one together that's 10 times you know, uh, greater, 10 times better, 10 times more engaging, 10 times more wow, 10 times more unexpected and shock and awe. So that's not easy. I'm going to tell you right now that none of these advanced techniques, when executed, are easy. None of these take little amounts of time. None of these are real cheats. You really have to think like a 10-time SEO link builder. In other words, when you're doing these things, it's not about looking for shortcuts. It's about building that authoritative guide. It's about leveraging things like video and visual, and there's a ton of different visual, infographics, high resolution original photography, um, how you're using that and captioning that photography to really stand out, to create your page, make it more engaging. Again, if we use a 10 times strategy, a thing I love about this, getting back to personal development real quick, is imagine if you guys did this with your own goals in your life. Imagine if you said, I want to make a million dollars by the time I'm filling the blank, and you said, no, I want to make $10 million by the time I'm filling the blank. You guys think you'd have a better chance of making the million dollars if your goal was $10 million? So similarly, when you guys are thinking about link acquisition, content marketing, which you're going to hear about and take a deeper dive right after my presentation, uh, you have to be thinking like 10-time marketers. Another old school tactic is link rec reclamation. You want to do things like better understand when your brand is getting mentioned. You could use tactics like Google Alerts. Um, when your brand is mentioned, either co-cited or without a link, reaching out uh, to ask for that link. This is manual. I get it. Uh, but you should have someone on your staff dedicated to this. You're looking for unlinked images and infographics. You guys could go to Google image search, um, do a reverse image search, and most likely if you're using high quality graphics like Yoast does, Yoast is, t by the way, Yoast is 10 timing the idea of using visual to execute a brand strategy. And that ultimately is, is, is he's reaping benefits, the company is reaping benefits by that investment. So if you are making uh, investments in visual, similarly, or if you're not, you should be, uh, this actually that simple tactic of just finding uh, others that are using your images and then earning that link is a simple way of doing it. And then, of course, broken links, which I'll talk about in a second, which is a, a, a real common way of staying on top of your link acquisitions. So this one you need to be very careful with because, as I said earlier, you know, not all link acquisitions are, are created equal. But there are niche websites that have legitimate, high quality, let's just say there's a, a selection process to um, them offering up resources. If you look at the screen here, you see where it says Certified Yoast Partner? Um, I think we've been, LSEO has been a certified partner for about three or four years now. Um, it is an incredible partnership. All that is, is a resource page on Yoast.com. It's highly selective. It's like invitation only, so I'm not going to fool you guys. You can't just send an email and get up on the list. But we worked on it, and we eventually got put on the list. So finding those types of pages. Well, how do you find them? I offered you guys a couple of search operators here. Um, you can either write them down or you can get, gain access to this presentation afterwards. Uh, each of these work um, depending on your industry or the industries that you're trying to build links for. The quality of it, as you guys could imagine, 
gets a little bit spammier. So you, you really have to be careful when you're building spreadsheets around potential partners that have resource pages um, like this. You also know that one of the things that has become incredibly popular with content marketing is uh, listicles um, and, 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 and similar uh, similar things, and so you know, being able to identify those ahead of time, reaching out to those sites, and offering up some suggestions for future listicles and or where you could participate is a good way of uh, using your brand, using your, your expertise, subject matter expertise, to build links. You know, guestographics, often when we think about guest posting, uh, you know, which really came into fame probably five years ago, um, Honestly, what's happened to that industry is a lot of really low-quality content that third-party websites will publish for money. If, if, if that's what the primary strategy is, low-quality content, and you guys paying 50 or 100 US to do that, you're competing with anybody who's willing to give low-quality content. Probably, in terms of our schema earlier on advanced link building, relevance, mm, you know, you, you start to, to hurt yourself. Guestographics. This is when you tend time, if you will, uh, the use of visuals, infographics, and other third-party assets that you offer up to targeted third-party websites that you'd like to earn a link from. I'm going to take the guestographic concept from an infographic to the next level because I think that video, by far and away, is the most effective way for all of us, every single one of us in this room, to build a stronger personal and professional brand. There's no doubt about it. I had wondered for a bunch of years when video was going to, to literally become the number one way that we could communicate, and I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that that time is now. Um, so putting together high quality video, but customizing it for uh, third party websites in return for a link. Whenever you're gonna give high quality, this is, I, I think this is, this is white hat. Um, you know, there, there might need to be some disclosure around it um, if there's compensation or whatever, but you know, you guys, in the same way that you're building great content, video, visual, written, on your site, you could do the same thing. That's the idea here. You could build guides and contribute them. This presentation will be repurposed in the next two weeks and published on the Yoast blog. How did that happen? I reached out to Yoast as I was putting my presentation together, and I said, I need to drink my own Kool-Aid. I said, this presentation is going to be actionable and, and, the, and the audience is going to be able to take it and really grow from it. Do you mind if I repurpose it and publish it on your blog? He said, Chris, of course. So that's just an example. And by the way, there's going to be visual. I'm thinking through different ways of making the content highly valuable to not only Yoast, but to their users. Ego bait. Um, eh, it kind of feels like a black hat term, but we all know that when it comes to motivating people of influence, Sometimes you have to make them feel important, and if you could do that effectively, uh, you know, you could build links from them. There is a US-based uh, link building company that does nothing more than build links from college professors and academics. How does this agency do it? It's not my agency. How does this agency do it? They write educational content. At the end of it, they have a sort of works-cited references sheet. In those references are the three or four or five professors that have published already on that particular educational topic. They were planted there, by the way, so that they could then, the link builder goes back and says, hypothetically, hey, Tony, hey, Sally, Professor Tony, Professor Sally, um, love your work. Oh, my God, we referenced you here. Would you link back to it? This is a hypothetical, but that has about a 70 to 85% success rate if you guys want to try to replicate it. But you could use that same idea in the new age of non-academics with social influencers, so keep that in mind. And you do that through leveraging your own social influence and really making the social influencers feel good. And if you could connect with them, then you have them via DM and you could start a conversation. Here's something that, um, that, that my agency has been, has, 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 is doing at scale, meaning that for some clients, we are acquiring 100 plus unique, authentic, high quality niche links per month. Influencer link building. 
You guys know that there are tens of millions of influencers globally. You know that we could pull data on them. Do they have a website? How many followers do they have? Do they retweet? When was the most recent uh, time they retweeted? What are the metrics on the website? All that fun stuff. And like all of us in here that are data nerds, we put that together in an Excel sheet and we start to geek out. Once you do that, um, you could data mine them. You could sort them. You could do all kinds of fun stuff to earn links for yourself or for your clients. Um, there are networks. There aren't a ton of them, unfortunately. But uh, one of my good friends um, uh, and SEO Oktoberfest brothers, Joe Sinkwitz from the United States, created a platform called IntelliFluence. Um, it has 20 plus million of these influencers, and it's a great source for you guys to initially find influencers that are looking for these types of partnerships. Final thing I'll say on this and kind of use your own imagination, I think it's early in this. Um, the, the, the hardest part is gaining access to all that data. And so someone's going to build similar systems to Joe's. Upfluence is another one that, that we've worked with. Um, but so it's kind of early in, in the industry. A lot of these influencers are not link builders. So again, getting back to my guestographic, getting back to the 10 time thing, you've got to put together content that's going to enhance who they are and their messaging. The moving man method. Um, it just happened to me recently. Uh, you know, we have, we have developers from one of my startups called Special Guest. We asked him to create a page called Find Talent so that when you go to specialguestapp.com, you click Find Talent, it defaults to all. I was actually out of town last week speaking at SMX West in San Jose on a Friday. They told me, Chris, the page is created. Awesome. Google uh, Search Console. Uh, sends me an alert the next morning. You are delivering about 4,000 uh, 404 errors. Oh, sh crap. Um, this happens. Unfortunately, what he did, and I'm, st and I'm still dealing with it emotionally, is he rewrote basically all of my categorical links for my primary, secondary, and tertiary talent categories. But those types of mistakes, those types of, I can't even believe it happened on my watch because I've been doing this for so long, we, we fixed it. But those create these interesting opportunities. So if you could identify sites that recently changed, right, and that didn't properly uh, institute 301s or otherwise, it creates an opportunity for you to, to have a relationship with them. This is a lot like the, um, I think it might be the next slide, or no, it's not, but um, this is a lot like the broken link strategy where you're looking for opportunities from a technical, a technical point of view to be able to um, earn links. So the idea here is you could use some of the data mining resources like SEMrush and others uh, to enter the URL of the outdated, outdated page um, so that you could get a whole list of you know, incorrect um, URLs. Not incorrect URLs, but ones that weren't properly redirected. You extract these into a spreadsheet, and you begin reaching out to the publishers. You convince them uh, the link is already outdated, it's serving an error, um, and then you come up with a strategy for your client or your site to replace it. I know, guys, it sounds basic. What I like doing is I like creating checklists. If you guys all as SEOs have checklists, let's call it your 15-point checklist, you either check the boxes or you don't. So if someone says to you, how effectively are you building links, right, and you're only checking one or two of the boxes, you could score yourself. The thing I love about checklists as well, let's just say it's a 10-point checklist. Each check represents 10 points. We all went to school and we have basically anything under 60% and you're not doing so well. You, you guys get my point. So you, you could apply that type of thinking to these types of um, strategies. Thought leadership is not easy. One of the, it doesn't happen as much now, but earlier in my career, people would say, Chris, how do you get that first opportunity to speak at a conference? You gotta put yourself in the room where the people that make those decisions make them, and that's how you do it. The other is you could just build up your thought leadership over time. But now it's kind of ubiquitous, and, and there are tons of podcasts, there are tons of blogs that are looking for guest contributions. So I just listed here a bunch of the things that I do. I mentioned earlier that I have contributed almost 400 publications. I've written three books, 
and I've done over 100 speaking gigs, right? I, this is all part, I swear to you, when someone reaches out to me that wants to have me in a podcast, I'm not lying to you. I say, I will go on your podcast if you link back to my, my businesses. And then I kick ass on the podcast. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deliver. It wasn't just for the links, but you guys should build a strategy around your personal and professional brand so that you are a thought leader. And this will have, this will pay you back organically almost more than anything else I mention. This is the, probably the hardest, but potentially the, the, the biggest game changer recommendation I'm going to make. Since we're all in the SEO space, think about what um, David Mim and the Moz team have done with the, lo the annual uh, local ranking factor study that they do. There's really like nobody else that does that. So if you want to get up to speed from a research point of view on how professional SEOs are thinking about the most important ranking factors, since Google's not going to hand us that on a silver platter, you basically go to the annual Moz um, uh, you know, uh, uh, local factors study. We could do the same thing. This is a significant amount of thought, planning, and also time. But we can do our own surveys, industry studies. You could do these for your clients. You have to do them right. Some of the recommendations I have is to partner with someone who, who understands statistical analysis preferably, depending on your community, someone in, in, in uh, the academic world. So partner with a college professor. They're always looking for partnerships, as I said earlier. And they're also looking for ego bait uh, because they have something called tenure and the, the more publications, et cetera. So, um, so think about this one, guys. Take this one, make it one of the checks on your, on your link building strategy. This one could be a game changer and it's something that you could bring back annually. People could mimic you, but as long as you continue to do it, and if you invite in the right people to serve on your advisory board and or contribute to the research, you're gonna be really, really good, especially if you're first to market. Building a widget or a tool or a badge, I gave this presentation 10 years ago when I mentioned this. I gave you guys a couple of examples of how you could execute it. On the bottom here, um, where it says deal of the day, uh, this was a widget that I had uh, built for one of my startups. If you see right at the bottom, it says Wilkes-Barre Daily Deals powered by Refer Local. I injected two HTML links in the, into the bottom of what was otherwise a JavaScript widget. And I got newspapers, radio stations, and television broadcast companies across the United States uh, to basically pull down the JavaScript code, place it on their site, because that was an interactive widget based on the deal that they had on any given day. Total kick-ass strategy scaled very, very nicely. Um, again, there are disclosures and stuff. This, this was something that I did about four, three, four years ago. Um, another real simple one, if you don't have the technical resources to build a JavaScript interactive widget, up on the top, you'll see the best of. You get into the ego bait, and you get into other, depending on what your, what your business is, you have the opportunity to create best of lists. It sounds, you know, Listen, that's not super sophisticated, but think it through. Play at a higher level. Think about how to do it in a way that's gonna be really valuable to the end user. And you could come up with something, I promise, that you could convince third parties that they wanna, they, they wanna say that I'm the best of. So think about that as it relates to your industry. Uh, just a, a quick shout out to Internet Marketing Ninjas. Uh, the founder, Jim Boykin, is an old school friend of mine. I served as chairman of that company for three years. Nobody, literally, across the world has spent more money, millions and millions of dollars, building free tools in the SEO space than Jim. And if you look at his backlink profile, I would attribute somewhere between 40 and 60% of all of his backlinks to that strategy. I already mentioned broken link building. You guys could get access to this presentation. It's super old school. It still works. Even guys like myself who've been around forever do stupid shit or you end up hiring you know, uh, someone that, that doesn't execute the strategy quite well, it happens, continue to use this. You also have broken links on your site that you should pay attention to. How do you execute this the best? You gotta use the 10 time strategy. This was all implied, I hope, throughout my presentation by using words like relevance, niche, 10 time. Um, automated outreach is really for spammers 
Um, it, it's, it's, I know, I know some, some of you guys are super technical, so you're thinking about how to do this at scale. You know what? Google's AI and machine learning is just two smart guys. It's short-term thinking. It's short-term uptick, long-term penalty box. Um, I get it. Also, some of my growth tactics for some of my businesses are stealth, and they're, they're aggressive. You know, databases of, of 70,000 talent from across the U.S. that we all want on our platform. You can't send individual emails to them, but you can think and write like a human. I'll just leave it at that. Um, let's see. Always think quantity over quality. Um, and if that doesn't work, you could always hire... Um, a company like LSEO or one of the other agencies here. I have about eight and a half minutes for questions, so if anybody has any questions. Um, I just loved how actionable that was. Cool. Really good, really good. Thank you. As Chris said, questions? No questions at all. Yep. One question over there. Yeah. Hi. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. You're coming uh, in even better right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're actually dealing with um, decisions that were made about 10 years ago about buying backlinks, which mm -hmm. was back in the day something they did, um, which are now giving us a lot of backlinks that are not good. They're not toxic, but they're not good at either. Um, what would your advice be on that? How do you get rid of them? Do you get rid of them? Mm -hmm. you, I, so Google's machine learning is supposed to be able to do this on its own. You, you, you're not supposed to, uh, you, apparently you don't have to disavow, but you still have the ability to do that. There are link detox tools over here in Europe um, that I would recommend if you have a problem like that, that you invest in and um, you look at it just like any other data set. You segment it, and you know which links really should be disavowed. And you know you come up with a, a, whenever I think about goal setting, I always like to think monthly, quarterly, or annually. I think at, at the most, that's a quarterly goal. Like, it shouldn't be an annual goal. Like, you've got three months to, to, to fix that. Mm -hmm. And um, I would use a link detox tool. And some of the bigger tools have that, um, but um, I think it's called, Marcus, isn't it called link detox? Uh, yeah, for, yeah. Is it linkdetox.com or something? It's link research, link research tools. Link research tools. All right, great. Yeah. And so, no, I th you know, I was, I was going to put a slide up on, on disavow and whatnot, but I decided not to just because I, I really do believe that, um, well, I, here's what I know, is that, that Google's AI and machines are going are gonna to really just weed out anything um, that is automated um, or that is, is clearly below the belt, and so that's why I didn't include it, but it's a great question. And it's something I actually I've been thinking about a lot recently, because just because Google, sa Google says something doesn't mean that's really what it is. And as SEOs, sometimes you know, one of these folks will say something, and then we'll share it, and we'll be like, oh, okay. And, you know, like the subdomain, you know, TLD and all that, all that. That's still like, if you move all of your content to a subdomain, uh, somebody said that it, it really shouldn't matter and Google should know. Uh, you guys could take that risk. I'm not going to take it, mm. you know? So. Okay. okay. Thank you. We've got a question over there in the middle. Thank you for this great presentation. Thank you. Um, we recently switched our site to, to HTTPS. Mm -hmm. um, do I have to go to all the backlinks and change them also to? Uh, HTTPS? You should be able to go into Search Console and just um, direct everything to your HTTPS and be okay. Okay. Um, that's how, that, that would be my advice. I mean, if you have the ability, if you have, if some of the, the links that are coming in are at arm's reach, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think that it would, could be helpful to have that direct and not through console. Um, uh, and if you have the resources, if you have the resources, which you should have, mm -hmm. sometimes when I'm talking, to, you know, this is a digital marketing crowd, but in truth, you know, Yoast's plugins often, a lot of the clients' referrals that we get are for smaller businesses. 
And the problem always is, is the lack of resources, that they just don't have enough resources. So they want to almost like invest enough to be able to say that they're doing something, but not really do enough. And so it's very hard messaging if you're a small business owner to just simply say, hey, you know, just take your resources and allocate 5% to reaching out and getting them to change to HTTPS. Yeah. Um, so if you have the resources, you should do it. If not, I think you could probably handle it in Google Search Console. Okay, it doesn't really hurt because I've read some articles about it that it will hurt your, um, how do you say, authority. But if See, you have a 301, then it's fine. If, if, if you have a 301 set up properly in Google Search Console, which, which uh, well, if, if you set up um, the right mapping mm -hmm. in Search Console, you should be okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Got a question right behind you. Thanks for the well, a good presentation and refreshing to hear that link building isn't dead and old school tactics are still relevant mm -hmm. if you do it properly. Um, you said relevance, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, makes sense, but on what kind of scale are we talking about? Are we talking about page relevance, domain relevance, neighborhood relevance? How, how far do we have to be relevant for a good link? I pulled out a slide 20 minutes ago. I just didn't like it on lo local link building. I just didn't like, didn't like it. Um, but think localization. So relevance comes down to the purpose of your business. If you're a local or regional business, I think you use the word neighborhood, but earning I mean links... online neighborhood, like good and bad neighborhoods. Oh, okay, so you use it differently. So yep. geographical yep. localization, I believe if you're a local business, the amount of authority that's being passed from a moderate to high authority website within your geographical region is significantly more important from a local standpoint than earning links from outside that region. So I even believe that to some degree, I think that localization and niche, so earning links from websites that obviously are in the same industry, I think when it comes to local link building, I would even say geography might matter more. I can make very specific examples. Yeah. Like, imagine if you want to boost something like compare energy as a, mm -hmm. a term you'd like to go for, and you do it through public, public publishing blogs on other websites, mm -hmm. and I could even go to like a hoverboard website, you know, those mm -hmm. scooter type hoverboard thingies and they have electric batteries in them and mm -hmm. so they consume electricity so we could like write an article about mm -hmm. uh, uh, how you can save costs on the use of yeah. one of these hoverboards and a partial, uh, one part of it could be, oh, you could say save on your energy consumed consumption costs mm -hmm. when yep. charging your hoverboard, but it is kind of far-fetched, but I mean, would it still be relevant if it's just on the page level compared to the other content on the website? So think about it from the point of view of, think about it like a circle. If you're earning links from the middle of the circle, you are earning them, and they have absolute relevance. Geographical, niche, domain authority, all the things you want. As you go outside of that circle, and, and by the way, I've always thought about link building, and many of you probably do as well, think about it like a link graph. So when you, if, if you have your circle and where your links are coming from, the majority of them, 70% of them, should be as close to the middle of the circle as possible. That includes a lot of the things that, we're, that if we had more time, we could go into. You create a list of all the various things that would put it right in the middle of the circle. And then on the outside are the ones that you might want to think about detox. You might want to think about disavow. But ultimately, thinking about all the links coming into your site, and you guys... I could pull your links, you could pull your links, you could do it through SEM Rush in the next 90 seconds. Take those links, categorize those links, understand those links, don't just take it for granted, and then do something similar to what we're chatting about, which is to say, how can less equal more? And I really believe that, and that's where my mind is on the, on the whole idea of detox and disavow, is that um, using this 10-time model, you know, thinking about thought leadership and, and contributing the guestographic, infographics, video, et cetera, to that closer to the circle, I think that's where we need to aspire to be as, you know, uh, professional link builders. And, and, and that's not where the industry is, by the way. And so. Thanks. Yep. So thank you both. Is that it? Um, that's it. Yep.
Yeah. Uh, I think we have like two minutes if you want to go to the other uh, room where Rafael is for over, uh, about branding. If you want to know more about links and link building and stuff like that, stay here. Uh, we have a great presentation. Coming. And I'll be here through tomorrow. Um, our president, oh, Chris Nash, is in the front uh, of, the, of the room. Raise your hand, Chris. If anybody wants to deep dive um, or correct me, I'm, I'm, I'm often corrected. Um, and I take that uh, sincerely. So thanks, guys. Thanks a million, Chris.